Here's an overview of the story so far regarding discretization. So we started with the differential form of the governing equations plus boundary conditions. So that's a mathematical model we have. It's a boundary value problem. And we went over to the equivalent integral form of the governing equations, and we also have the boundary conditions. Or you could start off with the integral form of the governing equations. And using the integral form, we saw how one can derive algebraic equations relating neighboring cell center values. And that's done by performing control volume balances cell by cell. And you do this control volume balances for mass, x momentum, and y momentum in our particular example. And that's how the finite volume method proceeds. Um, and in the cell-centered flavor of the finite volume method, the algebraic equations will relate neighboring cell center values. Let's contrast that to the finite element method, where we are given the same mathematical model. So we have the differential form of the governing equations plus boundary conditions. And from that, we would go to the weighted integral form of the governing equations plus the associated boundary conditions. So you're not going to the integral form, you're going to the weighted integral form. And using that, and this is called a weak form, um, and using the weighted integral form, you derive the algebraic equations relating neighboring nodal values. And you do that by assuming polynomial interpolations within each element for velocity and pressure, but also for your weights. Um, and because of this, you know, I, so in the finite element method, you're not going to each face and you're looking at what is the amount of, you know, mass or momentum crossing that face. And due to that, conservation is not built into the method uh, unlike the finite volume method. So you could get cases, as we saw in the heat conduction, where you could have um, heat leaving, you know, one cell through a phase not, or, or element not be equal to the heat entering the, um, the adjoining um, element. In at least simple situations, you do end up, you know, you can show that you would end up with the same form of algebraic equations in both cases, but you will, you know, as you go to more complicated uh, problems, you, you will not get the same form for the algebraic equations, depending on the details. I should also mention that there is a finite difference method, which some of you might have seen, um, and that's what I was taught in graduate school, where you go directly from the differential form of the governing equations, i.e. your partial differential equations, to the algebraic equations. And this method uh, has one disadvantage that it cannot be easily extended to irregular meshes and complex domains. And since we have complex domains and complex geometries in, um, in real engineering applications, it's not very popular in industrial CFD codes. So we won't deal with that method in um, over here, and we will focus on the finite volume method.